Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. Ready to get 30, 30, ready to get 30, ready to get 20, 20, 20, ready to get 20, 20, ready to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month. So give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes in detail. Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1011. Feb 1, 2023. I I didn't get the records, but I remember reading them. It was, I think it was 54 degrees on this day in 1931. And then in some other year, it was much colder than that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Is that the, that's the gist wow. of it? I had, I was, I, that's it for now. I think it was in uh, 1951. It was colder. It was 20 <laughs> below or pretty damn cold. Okay. And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's nice Garage forehead, Logic too, by the way. with Chris Reavers, Manning Technology Corner. A lot of it Kenny there, Olson. From the Krabby Coffee Shop. Uh, in the newsroom. And, of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. I read today... I can't remember the source, but I read today somewhere on Earth, a child is will be born who will be, who will live to be 150. That mm. apparently was a, an ode to the advancing medical technology and what have you. And so uh, ch- maybe more than one child born today will live to be 150. And I found myself thinking... Which is it? Are we going to live to be 150, or do we have nine years left? Oh, good point. What's the point of oh, this? I know. We don't seem to have our story straight. Right. Why am I looking at you? Isn't this great? No, I, I don't like this. Go <laughs> sit over there. I can't. Rookie's got to do it. Well, sit next to him. No. <laughs> then I already shot that. Go part. in the corner and sit with a dunce hat on. Okay. Anyway, 150 years old. Well, what is, which is it? We're not supposed to be here. We're ruining the earth. Where's Bert's email? Oh, are you guys aware of the Green Comet? You can come back, Chris. Sure am, Joe. The Chris, Green Comet. You can come back. <laughs> Rook's running your operation today. And tomorrow. Because you'll be absent for a bit, and Rook's going to handle it. That's right. And you've been training him. Oh, he is a great student. Look at him over there. Mm-hmm. Rapt attention. Uh, the Green Comet <laughs> is uh, going to be arriving, apparently for the first time since uh, Neanderthal years. And uh, Bert notes that we should call this the Equity Comet. You can be whatever color you want. Or it could be the Climate Change Comet. Uh, comet. And he is suggesting, though, that I will miss viewing it somehow. Yes, you will. Because uh, these things are, they come at inopportune times. I don't want to get up at three in the morning to look at a comet. You I do don't miss, care how rare it is. You tend to miss the celestial events. I do. And uh, speaking of that. What's the difference between a green comet and Tyler and a wrote comet? a novel called Celestial Navigation. Okay. Which I enjoyed mightily. And her current novel is French Braids. I so can't. I, I gave it twenty five pages. I can't read it. Is it how did you? Sorry, hair? Ann. I love you. You're from Minneapolis, but I can't. I just couldn't do it. Is it how to do fancy hair? No, that's another family story. Mm. But I, I couldn't. I found myself uninterested. Is that in your the normal twenty? Seriously, twenty five pages, and then a few years. Oh, by you, then I'm thinking, what the hell? If I don't get it by then, you're in or you're I'm out. out. I'm I out. learned on ancient aliens that um, in the early biblical times. The reason people lived 500, 700, 800 years is because the aliens were giving them a special concoction that extended oh. their life. Well, you're you're telling me something I did not know. I perhaps have not seen that episode. Yeah, I learned all that. In the early that, days, yeah. people were living to be 500 years old. Yeah, I remember in the Bible, there were all sorts of references to a longevity and living yeah. 800 years. Oh, boy. Yeah. But they were getting the magic juice from the uh, ancient yeah. astronauts. Yep. Think of yep. how many podcasts we could do in 500 years. <laughs> oh, my God. We would be up to. That would be a fun one. That would be a fun one. 
Sean in Fulda has a question. I, I think he's off base. I found it surprising that the federal government would award over $10 million in an accidental death lawsuit in Utah. A Ugandan lady was visiting a park in Utah after COVID. Let me stop right there. COVID plays no other role in this email. I don't know what COVID has to do with it. A Ugandan lady was visiting a park in Utah after COVID, and the gate arm was open but not latched. A gust of wind caught it and slammed it into the vehicle, slicing through the car door and decapitating the woman. What? Yep. Jesus. Is this a case of negligence on the park staff because the gate arm wasn't secured? Is this a case of negligence because the couple was driving by the gate in a strong wind and didn't use enough caution? Is this an act of God, or can we even use that term anymore to indicate something which happened without forethought or foresight due to weather events, gravity, and other influence not directly related to human activity? Thank you. Keep pushing back and occasionally looking up Sean down in Fulda. I don't, I'm, not, I'm very surprised that Sean finds this unusual. There really isn't much that can happen anymore in this country without you getting awarded some money so it doesn't surprise me at all that this poor woman uh, and her survivors uh, won some judgment against uh, against the government hmm. why would that surprise anybody but i'm wondering what role we played in it we being uh, what the taxpayer yeah well the federal you 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 pay for the government, and the government was decided it was liable for this. I suppose. And uh, what what is surprising about that? Well, nothing. Seems like an act of God. She should have sued our Creator. Mm-hmm. But my my point is that sue what, the Pope. Na- Name me something that you won't make money on. Uh, doing podcasts, <laughs> radio, <laughs> podcasting. But I don't bump. Yeah, well, yeah. Is that today's a fun day. Oh, yeah? We have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominees. Yeah, yes, we do. You guys just yell at each other. No, John and I uh, are going to see if we match up on who we would approve for entry. Hmm. Oh, and well, I will Kenny, turn Kenny thumb, and Chris and Rook. thumbs down on all of the nominations. Well, you haven't heard them yet. I'm already upset. So you're going to turn <laughs> thumbs down on <laughs> Willie Nelson. You rock and Roll Hall of Fame? He, Give me a break. Uh, yeah, there's people there's in no there rock that ain't and roll. rockers. That ain't rock and roll. But we've had that separate argument, have we not? Yes, we have. We have, yeah. I'm not sure that's not how Hank done it, is, is it? I don't think Hank done it that way. <laughs> Jerry Wasilek writes... It's, it's Waylon. Waylon. Something. Jerry Wasilek writes, leaving Minnesota. Oh, boy. Oh. Going to Wyoming? The last few shows, there have been discussions about moving from Minnesota. I have lived my entire life in Minnesota and swore I would never leave well, as I write this for my home in Kentucky, I want to let you know that every one of the reasons we moved in 2020 has been discussed by you guys. The cost of living is lower here. Taxes are lower. Property taxes are lower. I went from 3500 bucks a year on an acre lot. Where in God's name in Minnesota could you pay property taxes of only $3,500 a year on an acre lot? And he must have been way out in the wilderness. Yeah, maybe. To seven hundred and twenty-six dollars a year in Kentucky on over ten acres. Hmm. Wow! And Kentucky has their stuff together. My wife and I went to get new driver's licenses, and I was shocked that we walked out of the building with brand new licenses in twenty minutes. There are many other instances we experience that remind me that yes, we made the right choice and left the nanny state. I used to love and could no longer defend the reasons for staying. Thank goodness for the podcast. I've been a listener since 1992. Best regards, Jerry Wasilek. Yes, I think moving is a real viable option for people who can. Um, but that's unrealistic for many people, and we have to fight. We have to stay and fight. I forgot to send this to you, but there was a piece on Alpha News. I'll read just the paragraph here. According to data from the U.S. Census Bureau, the state of Minnesota lost nearly 20,000 residents to other states in the calendar year of 2022. The Center of the American Experiment, a public policy think tank based in Minnesota, uh, said the loss was by far the highest number in at least three decades. In the prior year, Minnesota saw a net domestic migration loss of 13,453 How many residents. In? I think that's the, this is the difference. Oh. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't think it's uh, – there's no hay to be made there. I don't think it's a topic. I don't think it's a thing. I think it's a topic in the sense that 
for people who are able to, that is an answer to uh, dealing with this state. The answer would be to no longer deal with it. Well, uh, census data also compiled by the think tank shows that since 2001, there have only been two calendar years, 2017 and 2018, where more U.S. residents moved to Minnesota rather than moved away mm-hmm. from it. And again, this isn't complicated, and and not a great deal can be made of it. Uh, if you're footloose and fancy free, and you have the kind of uh, job that would allow you to move or whatever your circumstances are, that will be an option for people. But for, uh, I would say, for the vast majority of us, it's not an option. Right. We're here. We're here. And and as long as we're here, you can't stop. You can't stop. You Wouldn't gotta... it be interesting, though, to see all of the different states, uh, Illinois, California, things like that? Wouldn't that be interesting to you? It certainly would to me. Well, I would it... imagine wherever you're running into the problems that Minnesota is running into, you would find similar statistics. It's 31 degrees right now in Louisville, Kentucky, yeah, yeah. or as we say in Douglas County, Louisville. Louisville. <laughs> Louisville. In 1996 on this day. Wow, that's a short podcast. Feb 1. Minnesota <laughs> recorded its <laughs> coldest temperature ever. Embarrassed Ooh. Minnesota. That's right, Chris. 72 below. 60 below. 60. In Tower, Minnesota. Oh, Damn. But I think that's right Ooh. near... Uh, Embarrassed. Right That's near, up there. Right well, because that was the that was the head photograph in the Star Tribune, wasn't it? An embarrassed Minnesota. Yeah, photo? I, I I should I should be more loyal to this. I get it all the time, and I I use it, but I'm, I should use it more often. I'm reading from today's uh, bulletin from the Center of the American Experiment, and they put that in there as a little bright. You know, that it was yeah, 60 below. They're clever over there. But the new, here, let's just go through their bulletin for the day in case you're deciding whether to leave or not. <laughs> the new tax required to fund Governor Walz's $1 billion paid family leave will hurt the lowest earners the hardest because it's a payroll tax. Ah. Uh, Minnesota State Colleges and University Chancellors seek a record $350 million funding hike despite declining enrollment. It's their standard solution. If something's broken, throw money on it. Where is the accountability? There isn't any. Nope. Is the DFL trying to chase people out of Minnesota? Here you go, Chris. A record 19,400 Minnesotans fled to other states from 1921 to 19... from 2021 to 2022. And what is the legislature doing? Doubling down on the very policies that are in part responsible for that exodus. And then see, you go to the American Experiment site and you could read the full stories. The colleges and university stories written by Tom Stewart. The DFL chasing people out of Minnesota is John Phelan. Uh, okay. Will Democrats enjoying their new power in St. Paul, with Democrats enjoying their new power in St. Paul, one normal part of the legislative process has been missing, conference committees. When important legislation becomes law, it usually goes through a separate process in the House and Senate. The bills rarely get through both houses with the same exact language, and a conference committee is necessary to work out the differences. The process usually fixes mistakes and produces the best possible result, but not this year. Nah. Details, Joe. We don't need to bother with that. The blackout bill passed the Minnesota House of Representatives last week, and the bill is currently sitting in the Senate. It won't be long before it's on Governor Walz's desk for him to sign into law, but not if we have anything to say about it, says the Senator of the American Experiment. The time to act is now. Tell your senator to vote no. And I have something to follow up on that. Uh, Okay. I have a letter. Uh, look this up, Reavers. Okay. Who is Representative Robert Bierman? B I E R M A N. You don't have a computer. I can do it for you. That's all right. I can just. Well, see somebody do it. Rob Bierman. B I E R M A N. I don't know. He's a Minnesota House 
member. I would imagine he's a DFLer. 56A. And that is where? That is, hold on, my, my glasses are terrible. I wonder why you're not using a real computer. Because my real computer is being used by a rookie. Okay. Um, 56A. What I, I've seen a couple of responses from legislators to citizens who are quick to get on the uh, opposition to the blackout, the so-called blackout bill. And I swear their responses are all the same. So I'm wondering if there's just this boilerplate document that legislators are sending out to okay. citizens raising concerns about the blackout bill. Yes. What do you want to know about him? Wh- who, where is he from? Apple Valley. Is he a Democrat, DFL? He is, uh, yes, he is from Apple Valley, North, uh, let's see, God. business owner, VA history. He represents University the Apple Minnesota. Valley area. That's that's what I was trying to say. Sorry. 56A, he represents. There's not much else in his bio here. Uh, according to his Twitter bio, he is the state rep, 56A, proud father, small business owner, and Clean energy supporter. All right. Married with the two children. All right. He received a letter from Ashley Conlin, who copied me. Representative, I am writing today to urge you to vote no on the 100% carbon-free electricity mandate by 2040 because these new regulations will cause electricity prices to skyrocket and put Minnesota at risk of rolling blackouts. Because you know about six months of the year here, it can often not be Sunday. That's Sunny true. Sunny or yep. windy. Research from the Center of the American Experiment found these mandates will increase average household electricity costs by more than 1600 bucks per year uh, every year through 2050. Minnesota small businesses would see their bills rise even higher. According to the Minnesota Citizens Utility Board, it is not uncommon for families to fall hundreds, if not thousands of dollars behind on their bills. The legislation will only make it more difficult for families to make ends meet. This dangerous bill will make Minnesota vulnerable to devastating blackouts that have affected California, Texas, and North Carolina because these states have become too dependent upon unreliable wind turbines, solar panels, and battery storage facilities. In fact, the research found Minnesota, Minnesotans would suffer through a 55-hour blackout in January 2040 if wind generation is as low as it was in January 2020. Given the enormous cost and danger associated with his irresponsible policy, it is no surprise that a survey from the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources found these regulations are deeply unpopular. In fact, a vast majority, 62% of respondents, said the 100% carbon-free mandate goes too far, and only 37% said it is about right or doesn't go far enough. This bill is deeply unserious because it does not lift Minnesota's moratorium on building new nuclear power plants, the only reliable carbon-free electricity source. As a result, it is essentially a risky wind, solar, and battery storage mandate. Even if we reduce carbon dioxide emissions to zero, it will only avert 0.001 degrees centigrade by 2100 an amount far too small to measure with even the most sophisticated scientific equipment. In summary, this bill will have a huge impact on my family's finances, but no measurable environmental gains. Enacting the same policies as California and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. I urge you to vote no on this bill. Sincerely, Ashley Conlin, and she provided an address to her rep, and she, too, lives in Apple Valley. Mm. Doesn't yep. everybody? Pardon? Doesn't everybody live in Apple Maybe Valley? she sent this to every rep, but this is the one she got back from Robert Bierman, 56A. Okay. 56A. And I'm not ripping Ashley by saying this, but you realize that's just a waste of her own time because there's no chance in hell he's going to change his vote. Well, your attitude is pathetic well, I'm s- because if we don't do this... We have no hope. So well, congratulations there, to her. Uh, I agree. And you right. are wrong and be quiet. Right. Oh, you know, God, he's, so he's dead on. He's right. Ooh. Joe, they're not even willing to negotiate with other people in elected office. He's not going to change his mind. Are well, you kidding me, me until the party tells him to? Well, the point is, I think he's giving a party response and not a personal response. If that corroborates your thinking, so be it. 
uh, because I, I suspect that the DFLers have a boilerplate letter they're using to respond to constituents such as young Ashley here. What if you wrote a letter to Melvin Carter and asked him to lower your property taxes? It wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, work. Oh, mm, so that's but different. Maybe ten, but maybe 10,000 letters would. Mm, doubtful. Can I read the representative's response, or do you asses want to just keep? Sorry. Oh wow! Well, I'm pretty good today. We already know they're lies. That I'm wasting my time. Go ahead. But you are. <laughs> Go ahead. Ashley, you convinced me. <laughs> Thank you for oh, reaching out to my office regarding the transition of Minnesota's electric systems to 100% clean energy. I have, which it isn't, by the way. I appreciate hearing from you in the time you took to share your thoughts. As one of the fastest warming states in the country, <laughs> can I have the we don't know that oh my God. upon my command? Can. When I can that, yeah, we got to get back to the other one here, though. <laughs> uh, we don't know that. It's Keep warmed it. up and ready. Keep it ready. Got her. As one of the fastest warming states in the country, Minnesota is already facing impacts of climate change. Uh, we don't know that. We need to act boldly to prevent irreversible and potentially catastrophic consequences. Uh, we don't know that. Additionally, too many Minnesotans have struggled financially in recent years due to dramatic spikes in fossil fuel-based energy prices affecting households and businesses across our state. Make no mistake, the, ener- tra- the energy transition is being led by our energy energy producers in this state, they realize the cost of production is moving toward a future led by renewables. Wind and solar continue to decrease in cost. Uh, We don't know that. And these producers are investing in the future accordingly. House DFLers are embracing opportunities to drive innovation, make energy more affordable, create good good paying jobs, and leading the transition to cleaner energy and greater climate resiliency. Uh, we don't know that. This year, the legislature will continue House File 7, a bill which would establish a standard requiring all electric utilities in Minnesota to use only carbon-free energy resources by 2040 while setting interim goals along the way. It would also strengthen Minnesota's renewable energy standard with new goals. The proposal includes provisions to assist workers in communities affected by the transition I mean like 79,000 workers, while prioritizing local jobs and prevailing wages for large new clean energy projects. Uh, We don't know that. This bill was already passed by the House in 2021, but was not supported by the GOP-controlled Senate because they're evil. They want people to die. Mm-hmm. At the federal level, both the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act and the Inflation Reduction Act contain numerous opportunities for Minnesota and its electric utilities to take advantage of to accelerate the clean energy transition while reducing costs for consumers. Consumers. That's a we don't know that. Uh, we don't know that. These include competitive and non-competitive funding sources for energy system deployment, investments in long-duration energy storage. Um, you get the idea. Yeah, it's all, like you said, boilerplate BS. Another important advantage for clean and renewable energy options is in cost. Minnesota is currently experiencing an en- energy revolution that was kickstarted by strong policies enacted in 2007 and 2013 and has been accelerated by the private market. Minnesota's biggest utilities are committing to carbon-free energy. XL Energy has already announced a goal to be 100% carbon-free by 2050 and 80% carbon-free by 2030. As of today, Minnesota Power generates over half of its electricity from carbon-free resources. House File 7 was introduced on January 4 and will be heard in the Climate and Energy Finance and Policy Committee Wednesday, January 18th. Well, we already know that. If you are interested, you can view that hearing remotely at the following link, and he gives her a link. Again, thank you very much for reaching out. Please keep in touch with me on any issues of interest or concern, Representative Bierman. Uh, well, we don't know that. She, she got no answer. Right. Hmm. Well, she got a load of crap is what she got. And I guarantee every person that sent him an email got that exact same that response. That was the point for me bringing this up. I think they've. I think the, all reps have this letter. Yes. 
uh, you know, as an experiment, go ahead and write your rep. This this will be the response you get. And her concerns weren't addressed. Her concerns weren't addressed. As I've told you before, if you want the government, the government we discuss, especially in this state, uh, in your life, then don't pay attention to this ad. But if you don't want the government attached to your life, uh, contact Eckberg Lammers Law Firm. They are estate planning. And uh, you're going to need a bulletproof estate plan when you die. And unfortunately, we're all going to die, and they can be your guy or your gal. It's a great service with great law firm. A lot of people think estate planning is just for old timers. No, no. If you're a parent or grandparent with young kids, you need to consider having your will prepared so that when you buy the farm, a court knows you selected a guardian for your kids. Otherwise, you're going to have family members arguing to a judge who will fill that role. And here's the thing. They might all be wrong. Get it settled now. You got a cabin. You got second property. You got the vacation property. Uh, You want to make sure that remains a treasure to your family and enjoyed by future generations? Talk to Eckberg Lammers. With proper planning, you can make sure to keep the peace. Allow for, and those things can become really difficult. I happen to know that. They'll take care of that and prevent that. They'll have a smooth transition. Little sibling fight a little bit a couple years ago. It'll happen. uh... It can happen. (laughs) Snowbirds, the Midwest is widely known for snowbirds. Those who spend the summer months in the Midwest, but winter elsewhere. When you own homes in multiple states, there are special considerations for taxes in each state. Let Eckberg Lammers figure that out with proper planning. To talk to your team about estate planning, call Eckberg Lammers at 651-439-2878 or visit EckbergLammers.com. Here's a man who spends hours in hardware stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Joe Suchere. Not only is it the first day of the month, it's the first Wednesday of the month. It's uh, Give Them All a Gulp Wednesday. Talking about your cylinders and a good, healthy gulp of sea foam. Reward those cylinders. Well, first of all, for a job well done in January and continued success in February. And if that vehicle you're driving has over 100000 on it, to just go give it the whole can when you fill up today. Your cylinders, your injectors, the jets, everything in there, they're going to thank you and reward you with higher miles per gallon and ease of starting, even when it's 60 below. You'll find it in the automotive aisle in those convenience stores that you go to and in NAC hardware stores all over Gumption County, not to mention the big box stores. It's available all over the globe and a true miracle in a world of ridiculously low temperatures and bad gas seafoam. We have a food fraud scandal in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Bond was set at 150 grand for a Dalton woman accused of stealing one and a half million dollars of chicken wings. Oh. <laughs> While working as a consultant for what? Oh, let's see. Okay, okay. Chicken I know wings. the story. Can I tell yes, it? Yes, you may. A school lunch program. A school district. Wow. Yeah. Is this wow. a national problem? Apparently. In uh, that was in South Suburban Cook well, County. To answer your question, it is because remember we had the story was it Atlanta, mm-hmm. and then but there was another one in Baltimore, if I'm not mistaken. This one is a little different. This Vera, story. yeah, Vera Liddell. You don't get Vera's many more, do you? No, you don't. <laughs> Vera Liddell, 66, began working as the director of food services for Harvey School District 152 in July of 2020, according to a according to a proffer. From her bond hearing. What's a proffer? Somebody, anyone, Uh, staff, proffer? Proffer. It's a judge. P R O F F E R. I'm going to stop on new words because it's important that we understand the language. Proffer. What does proffer mean? Hold out something to someone for acceptance. He proffered his resignation. That doesn't make sense in this no, case, does it? Proffer, a proffer is only made oh, prior sorry. to any formal negotiations. In a trial, to proffer, sometimes proffer, is to offer evidence in support of an argument, for example, as used in U.S. law or elements 
of an affirmative oh. defense or offense. And oh, the good nu- enough. That's the good. numerical value of proffer in Pythagorean th- numerology is six. It, how, about, how about in Scrabble? Proffer. How about proffer? Between July of 2020 and February 2022, <laughs> prosecutors said Liddell placed hundreds of unauthorized items for food items. I'm sorry, placed hundreds of unauthorized orders for food items, including 11,000 cases of chicken wings through the school district's main supplier, Gordon Food Service. The orders were placed separately from the district's legitimate orders, prosecutors said. The massive fraud. Hey, Chicago, you want massive fraud? We got $250 million. Hold our beer. Yeah. The (laughs) massive fraud began at the height of COVID during a time when students were not allowed to be physically present in school. Even though the children were learning remotely, the school district continued to provide meals for the students that their families could pick up. Oh, yeah. We were doing that here, too. I've got some audio from Vera's household. Hey, Vera, what's for dinner tonight? Chicken, Chicken wings. wings. <laughs> Believing the orders were Again. genuine, Gordon Food Service billed Harvey School District 152, which then paid for the food items. According to court records, Liddell would then allegedly use one of the school district's cargo vans to pick up and transport the stolen food. The food was never brought to the school or provided to students, the proffer said. A routine mid-year audit conducted by the district's businessman. At least they had an audit. Mm-hmm. We didn't even have an right. audit. Because yeah. Walls put people in place that didn't need an audit. They were too competent. He was shocked, though. Yeah. I remember, he was shocked. A routine mid-year audit conducted by the district's business manager in January of 2022 showed the food service department had exceeded its annual budget by more than three hundred grand, despite being only halfway through the school year. Prosecutors said Liddell was the only person responsible for placing food orders on behalf of the district. Upon closer review, she discovered individual invoices signed by Liddell for massive quantities of chicken wings, an item that was never served to students because they contained bones. Ah. (laughs) Employees of Gordon Food Service said they were all familiar with Liddell due to the massive amount of chicken wings she would purchase. And surveillance video of the facility showed she would often arrive prior to the store opening to pick up the orders. Liddell was charged with felony theft and continuing a financial crimes enterprise. She's currently being held at the Cook County Jail and is due to appear in court again on Feb 22nd. Wow. So what are we to surmise? That she was selling the chicken wings? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, she had a, yeah, she had she a, had yeah. a, a side <laughs> to, job. To whom? Chicken wing places. You know, opening the, the, uh, the, the hey, black market. Some chicken wings. The black market. I thought we had a chicken wing shortage in the country. Hence why there was a market for these on the secondary. Because right now, uh, apparently, there is no chicken wing shortage. Prices of chicken wings have come down in sports bars. and. What alike. flavor you like? I'm not a chicken wing person. Oh. I don't, uh, I don't believe in it. Parmesan. Why, I still too much think work? there are chickens that don't have wings. Right, have There's bones in their walking wings. Walking around. Yeah. Why do? You, why don't you like them? They're too much work. Messy. Oh, Matt, I don't know. Because if they're know. slow cooked on a grill. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, baby. Come on. Much today. work. You're right, Rook. They're too much work for me. Yeah. That's why. Okay. I don't like okay. Them. If they're dry rubbed, Ooh, uh, nice dry I, I could do that. Yeah, I don't, you don't, you don't, need to I don't want any don't want barbecue drown sauce. Don't drown it. Any of that B as in B. It's dry. Dry rub. Yep. Uh, careful. Kenny's yeah. nickname. And he's right. He's uh, <laughs> in <get> a rash. <laughs> okay. How was the Krabby okay, Coffee Shop today? Then. I see an item just popped up on my phone. Oh, really? Perfection and morons. Pretty much sums up the podcast. What what does that mean? Let me tell well, you think shot. about you it. You had to write it. I'm not on that show. Oh, well, I didn't. I didn't write that's that. Kenny and John I with thought, Dawn uh, and Ross. I'm sorry, I thought you did that. No, we uh, no, I didn't write that. Did Ross write that? Possibly. Ross must I'm have guessing. Huh? Yeah. Perfection of uh, We have uh, Johnny coming up, and it's one of my favorite newscasts of the year. It does often uh, break into a brouhaha and Ooh. fisticuffs, a Donny Brook. Well, the only a Tilly, a Tilly. Yeah, the <laughs> only knowledge hands. musically that I want when it comes to this is the knowledge of Rookie, with the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> a lot of these groups yeah, you'll have these? no knowledge of. Oh, I think you'd be so surprised. We'll all keep track and see who we agree yeah, with. Let's all right. Keep track. 
And then John can be officious and tell us how wrong no, we are. You're very, gonna, very condescending. Yeah, very Joe, condescending. once again, you're going to end up bashing my fist with your nose. And uh, you, you'll learn. What? This nose. Why? Because John's right, you mean? Oh, never mind. We're going to find out when we return. But first, oh, I'm going to listen to this stinger. <laughs> and then I'm going to tell you about Hofferman Water. You got to do it slowly. slowly. Guess who was at my house today? Hofferman Water. Santa? Joe with Hofferman Water. <laughs> what, do you have him over there every day? Well, you got to get the filter changed. You, you guys see. got a thing going? Kind of. Can't you change that yourself? I could. However, I'm too dumb, and I want it done correctly. So right. Joe stopped out. He's a huge GLer. You don't Let's... have to address this to me. No, his name is Joe. Okay. I'm not talking to you. I'm just saying Joe stopped out. You You're guys like have the same name. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's been about a year, so I had him come out to change the filter on my water softener and my drinking water system because I thought, what the heck, I'll get them both done at the same time. Yeah, serious question. Do you yeah. get your water out of your own well? Well, you do, but then you also have a separate, I do anyway, I have a separate drinking water system attached to the sink in my kitchen. That's not what I asked. Does all the water in your house, be it for drinking or bathing or cooking, come yes. from your own well? Correct. You're not hooked up to a city no, system? No, I'm, I'm hooked up to a city system that then goes through the water softener treatment system from Connecticut and Hofferman. Does that make sense? Are you in the market? i got to sign you up then to have them come out and give no, you an good. evaluation. I will say this about St. Paul. It has great water. Well, yes. it's because you pay so much in property taxes. Yeah, We have great water. 952-894-4040. That's the number for Hofferman Water. You can also visit their website, see everything that they have to offer, whether it's water softeners, iron rust, odor filtration systems, or drinking water systems. Man, are they busy. And it's thanks to you GLers that have been making the call to Hofferman Water. So Joe and the entire crew over there, thanks you. HoffermanWater.com. Please tell them you heard about them here on the Garage Logic Podcast. It's the end of the world as we know it, and he feels fine. Joe Souchere. Here is John Height, and we're going to be discussing the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We will. We'll get to that in just a moment. First, let me tell you this news is brought to you by Air Mechanical. Johnny, thank you for telling me that because Air Mechanical, since 1985, has served the Twin Cities for their heating, cooling, and plumbing, electrical needs. They do it all. They also help with drain cleaning, duct cleaning, indoor air quality. They serve the entire metro area. From general maintenance to the full install, they got you covered. Don't worry about it. Furnace installs, boilers, heat pumps, garage heaters, and more. Air Mechanical employs top trained tradespeople in the state of Minnesota. They operate with full integrity, do things the right way, not the easy way. Their Total Solutions membership is like having Air Mechanical on retainer. Keep all of your home maintenance needs in one comprehensive membership. Select a tune-up once a year and enjoy benefits like discounted maintenance, repairs, service and equipment costs, catch problems before they arise, and keep your home's mechanicals running smoothly, baby. We'd love it if you gave Air Mechanical a shout for any heating, cooling, plumbing, or electrical needs, or book them online, thankami.com. That's thankami.com. And I want to mention that the new author's corner is up on the Garage Logic website, and it will become a more regular feature. Fantastic. Yep. What nice. was your favorite one out of the... Because you put a bunch in this particular update. Uh, well, you can't beat uh, you can't beat camp. Sure. John Sanford. I liked them all. You'll have to read them. Uh, they're, they're, they're fun. There That's was a request. There. Uh, Pat from the border of Minneapolis and St. Paul was wondering, how, how frequent are these going to appear on the website? Uh, <laughs> That's to be determined, but yeah, we'll they're going to be out. more frequent <laughs> than they have been. <laughs> the border of Minneapolis and St. Paul, huh? Yeah. The border, yeah. He lives right there on the border. Yeah. Uh, all right. In the well, news now. We'll, we'll... That way. So he has lunch <laughs> in Minneapolis and his desk <laughs> yeah. is in St. Paul? Cool. Yeah. How do you do that? Cool. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll go right to the Rock and Roll do? Hall of Fame because, uh, you know, that's just the way this works. We'll what, Jen? We'll go right to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. All right, story. I got my pencil and paper. All right, All right you ready? Yep. Uh, remember, these are just nominees right. this year. For the and we're going to decide who we think should go in. Correct. All and right. the, voting, the voting takes place, I think, through May 1st or something like that. So I'm only writing down we, the people uh, that I think should go in. I'm keeping a score pad to see how many we each pick. Yeah, there we go. Right here. All right. Here we go. Yep. You ready? Yep. First. I, I don't know what kind of order these are. Probably alphabetical. I don't know. Uh, art rocker Kate Bush. That's a no for me. 
We got no's all around the was board. Was she nominated years. strictly because of the renaissance that one song had, Johnny, from this year? Yeah, and she she was nominated last year too, Chris, because apparently it had come up at that point. Uh, uh, it was from a movie, right? Or yeah, uh, no, uh, Stranger Things. Stranger uh, you things know what? Very, no, yeah. no. Okay. Kid Bush got... doesn't get in this year, next year, or right. any Ever. year. I don't have Ever. An, I don't have an opinion. Yeah, I, I don't really either. I don't dislike or okay. like Kate Bush. So there you go. Well, are you a uh, no or aren't you? Uh, I'm going no. All right. Just because it's not, yeah. But I don't have any, you know, like you guys sound like you hate her. I don't hate her. Do <laughs> you value my opinion or no? Um, not really. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. Cher- Cheryl Crow. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. That's a yes for me. That's a yes so. for me. I think so. 30 Kenny? feet from stardom. Mm-hmm. Yes, please. That's a yes and Chris. That's unanimous, huh? Yep. Wow, pretty good. Uh, hip hop uh, lady Missy Elliott. No, for Missy me. misdemeanor. I have no idea who that is. That's a no That's for a no. me. If I, I know don't it is, know, but I, I don't have enough info. I, I confess, I, I don't. I know, like a couple of her songs, but she doesn't belong in the hall. Of is fame. that Cass Elliott's daughter? Uh, no. no, that's not Cass Elliott's daughter. Well, then daughter. she doesn't get in. She's not going in. Then she's not uh, in. Iron Maiden. I'm going yes. yes. Oh yeah. I went yes. I'm going yes for longevity and. Uh, He's a pilot, right? Yeah. 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 Rook's thinking. I can tell. Look at them. I'm trying to think. Just, of, I, I know who they are. I, I seriously know, but I, I don't know one of their. I've songs. never seen Run them, the but hills. apparently they put on a hell of a show. Let's throw them in. They've okay. been around Rook's a while. Yes They've been around a while. Unanimous with them too. Right. Uh, Joy Division slash New Order, and they go together because uh, there are members that uh, are bleep really that. <laughs> It's not my favorite deal, so no. I'm, go- I'm going no. no. Just I have no opinion. Just, <laughs> not only no. Uh, a no, they should think about a new name. That's yeah. stupid. Yeah. Which um, one? Because there's two names. Two all of them. Boys, all of the whole, above. Whatever they call themselves. <laughs> no. <laughs> the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah. Yeah. Like Joy that. my ass. Yeah. Is what they wow. should be called. Sheesh. Then you would vote for them. Yeah. Uh, next, Cindy Lauper. Yes. No. Yes. That's a I no went for yes. me. I'm going so, yes. Okay, Cindy going gets no. in. She was a not uh, enough of a body of work. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. What? You are, what girls the just want to have anybody fun? that features Captain Lou Albano in the video goes into the Hall of Fame. I, yeah, plus I she's agree. properly she crazy. Yeah, she, <laughs> she is. is. Mad, she mad is. Case of she is. I'll give you that. Yeah, she no. gets in. We like crazy. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm a no on that one. Okay. All right, my uh, standards Mike- obviously are much higher than yours. Yeah, I doubt it. George Michael. Hell no. What did I say the other day? Not your hell no. Remember when, if we could bring back one dead singer? Oh, you right. did. And you I said, said George, George Michael. Just because he was taken at the, at the he, was, he still had more improvement. He, he too. Yes or no. Yes. I don't yes think he, wrote? no, I'm I don't think he surprised he didn't get nominated after I'm, he died. I'm a no. There should be a preemptive banning for life for George Michael. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm not going to disagree with that. that. His yeah. name should never be brought Shouldn't up again. Shouldn't even be a nominee. So no. so there's no George Michael record you guys like? No. No. None. Seriously. I Seriously. I did like some of his songs, but I don't think he warrants yeah, I, Hall I, of I like, Fame. I like Where are you guys on too. Wham? You guys, I'm no. No. No, not on Wham. Careless Whisper is not I bad. I liked, uh, what's good. the one song? If you're uh, sad and you just lost your girlfriend. John, now you're being a jerk on purpose. I I'm see not, right through a, your act. There's a Wham song that I love. Bump well, that's uh-huh. too bad. Uh-huh. Move along. Funky, no. uh, Remember the seal video we played for Joe? Where he's playing Careless Whisper? Yes. That was pretty good. What's, what song is that? Rook, come on, help me out. Be my uh, wham guy. All right. I'll, you know, I'll then you tell me that you have in your baby. It was a big hit. Having my it was a baby. Great song. It was a great <laughs> one song. step further and my do my back will break. That one. Yeah. Uh, good enough for you. Yeah. Having my chorus, baby. I'm going no, just right. I'm a man of love and a love right. that's anyway, going to Let's move me. along here. Let's move along. I'm sorry. I, uh, no, yeah. no, you're not. Next, Willie Nelson. Yes. yes. Hell. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's because he's not rock and roll. It's because he's country. Right? Willie Nelson should have a Hall of Fame just for Willie Nelson. <laughs> you know, that's tough to argue with, Kenny. That's he, as John says, a monster songwriter, performer, actor, but he is not rock and roll. And I'm he has never. He's 90. He's never been rock and roll. I will. I think Kenny will agree with me. He should go in. Just because he's part of one of the, he's a star in one of the greatest movies ever made in The Dukes of Hazard. Mm-hmm. Not next. Let's, Hazard. Not, let's not get bogged down with oh, non sequiturs from movie. Reavers. The movie. 
rage against the machine. Yes. Oh, yes. Why aren't yes. they in? Absolutely they should not. Absolutely be in. Their rage Can is no different than any other rage. It's not that interesting. Rage no. against my bank account. <laughs> That's a no. Soundgarden. Yes. yes. Joe goes, yes. Kenny goes, yes. Although. I'm, I was yes on Willie. Soundgarden, I don't know enough about. Oh, I How missed Willie for you, Rook. Here we go. How many hits does Soundgarden have? Uh, enough for me. They got a few. But I are you, are you mixing them up boys. with the Temple of the Dog? No, they're all the same. Okay. That's, they're well, close enough. Good. <laughs> uh, the Spinners. I can't believe the Spinners aren't in already. Uh, I can only get four. Me. No, I guess I have more than four yeses. I will go Spinners, yes. You're up to five already, yep. as am I. Yep. Anybody we'll else with spinners. the Spinners? I would say the Spinners are worthy. Sure. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Yes spinners. Definitely, yeah. uh, yes. Who doesn't want to be a spinner? Yeah. No, you know what I want to be? I want to be a pip. Irish pimp. Gladys I'd like Knight to be a pip. I want to be a, a pip. spinner pip. Yeah. How about, uh, as we change subjects quickly, a tribe called Quest? Yes. Yes. Nah, not for me. Everything I've ever heard by them, I love. I don't know their body of work that well. There isn't a body. They're of fantastic. Work. No, yeah, I have a few is. of their Everybody albums. Violent. They're really it's good. good. Yeah. yeah. Every single song is good. Everything is good that I've heard by them. Yep. Good yep. So I, I don't, I guess I, I go. Tribe maybe, is in. Maybe. Can I say maybe? I don't no, know. you can't say maybe. Okay. I guess I'll go no just because I don't know enough. Wow. You're but wrong. I would say Wow. Things. Well, I agree. I just got done You're saying like a it. I wet like towel. I, you know, you guys are just pathetic. White stripes. I've never understood what any fascination with them whatsoever. There are no in capital letters. I, uh, boy, couldn't disagree more. And, and they got that yards. one Muppet there playing the single drum, and he's strumming on some $15 guitar. He's a guitar. great guitar player. Is it yeah, white he's, he's, stripes he's, there are no. Is it Animal, a wonder, the Muppet? wonderful guitarist, actually. Yeah. <laughs> They're Have you heard horrible. That's a yes for me. Have you heard Can I Kick It by uh, Tribe? Can I kick oh, it? Oh, that's a great yes, song. Yes, you can. Yeah. Can I See, kick it? I know it? that. Maybe, yes, you know what? Can. I'm going yes on them, too. What about, hey. I left my wallet in El Segundo. I left my I wallet in, got to get it. And no gotta, gotta on the white it. stripes. Remind okay, me, are they yes. married, the white stripes? No, they're brother and sister. That's what it was. Okay. They're too precious. They don't get in. Don't Anybody in. precious? It's, it's, nobody it's, precious gets everybody in. Everybody stopped talking. They were not brother and sister, Joe. Uh, they were cousins then. They were married. That's what I thought. Thank you. I was right. So they're married brothers and sisters, and you want them here. in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Last but not least, should have been in the Hall of Fame years ago, finally nominated for the first time, Warren Zevon. I'll go yes. Wow. Yes. I'll go yes. What took so long? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, by the way, there's a great piece today in the L.A. Times on Warren Zevon because he was nominated. Yeah. Read that if you get a chance. It's a great piece. Well, all right. A uh, wham was uh, everything she wants, John. I put thank you. Six That's in. Thank you, Bernie. By I put six in. Yeah. I saw Warren Zevon about a zillion times. I never yeah. saw him. He, uh, Steve had him in the main room twice a year. Always had yeah. him. He could never sell that place out. It was always a half a room. The governor loved him. Jesse loved oh, him. Really? Wonderful. Yeah. Killer songwriter. I mean, yep. amazing. Good as you can get. Good yep. as you can get. All right. You know? Well, that was fun. I guess. Hey, we'll Warren, to... come on out. <laughs> <laughs> Something about the headless Tommy Run a Gunner. What is it? Gotta be neat if you did somebody current. I don't know. Do what now? <laughs> like Hank he... Johnson. Didn't he wear a, a Warren Zevon T-shirt oh, to his inauguration or something? Oh, he yes. did. Yes, he did. Didn't he? Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. Well, I think Warren performed at his a party. Not if uh, Jesse had to pay him. I don't think <laughs> Jesse had to. It was probably the inauguration party. Him and uh, Kid Johnny Lang. Hmm. What ever happened to him? Whom? He's Johnny still out Lang. on the road. He's still hmm. out, yeah, making albums. And He's got uh, all local guys working for him. It's pretty cool. He did. He did have to take a year off. He had. Uh, Polyps, nodes. I was going to say his throat, throat issues, right? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. He took a year off, but now he's back. He's, uh, he's in his mid 40s by now. Yeah. Probably, no longer a kid. Yeah. yeah he, we he all remember out. him as that kid from Fargo. Yeah. What was his he hit? Lie to me? A couple killer albums. Album. I think so. Yeah. Three years ago, uh, four years ago, that were just wonderful soul rock kind of things. Hmm. But yeah, he's no, kind of a poor songs. man's John Mayer, and I, but I like Lang better. No, it Boy, I'm not. I'm not sure. I agree with any of that statement. No, no, that's all. That's all. You're <laughs> wrong. Once again, you're wrong. You just uh, turned 42 on the 29th. I made that up. 
I made that up. Uh-oh. All right. In the news, well, unless you guys want to keep talking music, I'd rather do that. Well, who do we have in yeah. common? Crow, uh, Cheryl Crow, Iron well, Maiden, Willie Nelson, uh, no. and the Spinners we all had in common. No, we didn't yeah. have Willie Nelson in common. Well, you it wasn't didn't. unanimous with Willie because of Kenny. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that's the only see. Hall of Fame that's available, Kenny. So you, you got to get him in that one. Well, well no, there is a it. country Hall of Fame. Well, I'm no, sure you he's don't been put in him in the rock and roll. Years. Yeah, I'm no, sure he, he, he doesn't get in rock and roll. Sorry, love well, him. Well, you know, my him, no. my theory, fellas, is it doesn't. It quit. It ceased to matter about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, change journey, the name then. Well, when Journey and Bon Jovi made it in, it it didn't matter anymore. Well, they're it. both rock and roll. But they're dreadful song. rock and roll. But they're rock and roll. Yeah. Now, now, Joe, you and I are going to get emails about Journey and Bon Jovi. You know. Well, that. they're horse. Well, they're they're wor- <laughs> lousy. Careful. horse Careful. hockey. They're horse hockey. Yeah. <laughs> horse apples. <laughs> and uh, Journey, you got news. that guy, that little teeny guy that running around there. He replaced some singer and. Uh, well, Steve Perry was the original singer. And bon what Jovi got rid of the guitar When the player. lights go out in, in the, the city. city. Oh, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> That's actually the only song by them I can stand. But see, now we're all going to get emails. About I'd like to know how much money they made off the ending of The Sopranos. Because wasn't that just basically. It was a revival, basically. Yeah. Of... It basically, yeah. yeah. It also, you know, I'll never mind. Which it, group? <laughs> Journey. Journey. They played the, you know, Can't Don't, Don't Stop, Stop Believing Believin was the ending of The Sopranos. When it went to black. And they had millions of digital downloads. What the was the day. theme song to The Sopranos? Because that was fantastic. Whoa, that was a good song. And had who's the worst? Know that. Who's, uh, who's worse, Journey or Kansas? Boy, that's a tie. Mm. Boy, that is tough. I yeah. Just, just the lyrics to Dust in the Wind alone make me want to yeah. slap. The yeah, guys give me a rope and a rafter. Wow. Let's but go. the solo in Carry on Wayward Son, that's a guitar solo. Speed so Steve, of the Sound of Loneliness, 1997. Woke Up This Morning is a song by English band Alabama 3 from the 97 album Exile on Cold Harbor Lane. Huh. The song is best known for the opening music for The Sopranos, that is which is the chosen one mix of the song. It's a wonderful a great song. song. It is. Yeah. It's a great yeah. opening. Okay, in the news, <laughs> the city of St. Paul is launching a new traffic study trying to make roads safer for drivers and pedestrians. Mm. The Public Works Division is rolling out a transportation safety action plan. It's a comprehensive review of the transportation system in St. Paul to learn more about the biggest safety issues and how to prioritize improvements in those areas. Does it have equity? There's a focus on pedestrian safety. Back in 2014, the department kicked off a Stop for Me campaign to educate drivers on the importance of stopping for pedestrians <laughs> at a crosswalk. It, really it really is. Wow. Stop for me. Stop for me, please. Because I'm special. Because right. I'm so also... stupid, I'm just going to walk across this intersection. Risking my own I'm life. I'm a pedestrian. St. Paul Police is urging drivers to slow down and stay alert around crosswalks and for pedestrians to not abruptly cross the street, give the driver time to stop. There's a viral video of a vegan protester walking in front of a uh, semi that's pulling in pigs to be slaughtered. And there's, I don't know, 20 of them. And they all went after the semi driver. I'm thinking, why are you not mad at this idiot for walk, d- deliberately walking in front of a semi? So that's who we're trying to protect is morons like Did this. The, the semi driver even see her? No. Uh-uh. Well, yeah. And he was turning a corner and she, you know, he just, he blasted the horn, but I'm thinking, why are you mad at the semi driver? My favorite is the people that get outraged when you don't stop for them when they're not even close to the crosswalk. Right. Yeah. They're still yep. five feet away yep. and approaching, and I go through, and they get all bent out of shape. Yep. They make a face, and you can see them mouthing words at you. Yeah, yeah. I give them a little wave, you know, a little, <laughs> I show my respects. <laughs> Star Tribune reporting a 32-year-old unlicensed driver was given a one-year jail sentence for admitting he sped through a red light at a St. Paul intersection and killed another motorist in a collision about a year ago. Salvador Battles of St. Paul sentenced in Ramsey County District Court after pleading guilty to criminal vehicular homicide. It's all in connection with an early morning crash February 26th of last year at Creton and Marshall. That crash killed 25-year-old Isaiah Valley Kirk of St. Paul. With credit for time served since his arrest, Battles has about seven and a half months of jail time remaining. Judge John Guthman also put Battles on probation for eight years, set aside a four and three quarter year sentence sought by prosecutors 
That sentence would have put Battles in prison for three years with the balance to be satisfied on supervised release. Police arrived at the crash scene on that day shortly after 2.15 in the morning, found Valley Kirk behind the wheel of his car, which was badly damaged. They took him to Regent's Hospital, where he died. Officers met at the scene with Battles, who'd showed signs of intoxication, failed a police field sobriety test. He said he had one beer at the time leading up to the crash. He contended he had a green light and thought he was going 30 miles an hour. However, witnesses said he was going at least 40 miles an hour and went through a red light. University of Minnesota has reopened the Northrop building just under three weeks after a partial roof collapse. Early on the morning of January 12th, the damage could be seen from outside the building, which was closed off due to the collapse. The building first opened in 1929, had most recently undergone renovations that wrapped up in 2014 and allowed the auditorium to be reopened to the public. No updates regarding the Joffrey Ballet, which had its 20th and 21st performances postponed in January. They have not provided any updates, but currently scheduled events at Northrop are moving forward as planned. I've never been to a ballet. Hmm. I, have. I haven't either. Um, that not doesn't cracker, surprise me. Not Cracker Ballet. And it was... Uh, the only thing worse was uh, Nutcracker on Ice. Hmm. That was, don't ever go to Nutcracker on Ice. We, was it a part of a trilogy? What were you doing? Uh, no, it was just, uh, you know, trying to be. Um... Is there anything you won't say yes to? Do, <laughs> do you man up about anything? Oh, of course I do. Uh-huh. Dear, well, yes, name I'll one. Dishes name here one. Nutcracker oh, on Ice. We tried to be, you know, you get to see those things and you're very, uh, you know, sophisticated. Very elegant, you know, it's very... Um, uh, I, I, I tend to carry myself away from work with the upper echelon in society. You know, I can't just be a knuckle drag and meat eating garage logician. What you know? the hell are you talking about? Yeah, I, I, don't I have know. no you, idea. You lost me. Yeah. A concert announcement Beyonce announcing she's going out on tour. She will stop here in the Twin Cities. Beyonce's Three, Renaissance two, Tour. One. In support, of, <laughs> in support of her latest album by the same name. She was starts just May here. 10th. No, it's been six years, it says. What? I would leave my family on Christmas morning. <laughs> Seriously. And I'd tell them where I'm going. And they'd say, oh, yeah, he's got a point. She'll, she'll perform at Huntington Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, Thursday, July 20th. Uh, you can register for verified fan status via Ticketmaster's technology to have a better chance of getting tickets. Presale starts February 6th for Beehive members. City credit card members and Verizon Up customers. You a member each of the Beehive? Member? What girl group was she a member of? Destiny's Child. I think the roommate would high five me on the way out the door. Yeah. I'm pretty sure she would. Yeah. You go for it, Kenny. That's what she'd say. Yeah. You go. What's for your it. favorite tune, single ladies? Who me? I don't know any songs. <laughs> Just like Beyonce. Come on, Brooke. <laughs> But the trouble with her Never would be every time, sing. every time you're with her and you're alone, there would be a big fan blowing on her. Yes. Cause, yeah, because yeah. the hair is yeah. going all over the place. <laughs> she might be a little needy. When yeah. I she saw this, John, needy. it rem- they haven't had a concert there in a while at Huntington. Huntington. Is that yeah. where the Gophers play? Yes. Outside? Yeah. 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 It's mm. been a while. Yeah, was there, there hasn't been any in the last couple of years, have there? I don't think Tear so. Tear it up. Uh, one other music note uh, while we're talking. Is that talking. her favorite song? Is that what you... Oh, right. <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne has announced his retirement from touring. <laughs> the Black Sabbath frontman pulled the plug on all of his upcoming shows in the UK and Europe this year as he continues to recover, uh, recover from spinal surgery. In a statement, he said he's no longer able to tour around the globe due to damage to his spine that he endured in an accident four years ago. Well, his brain. He apologized to fans. While Osborne admitted his singing voice is fine, he says his physical health was taken a toll for the worse amid his ongoing battle with Parkinson's disease. He's been living with a brain disorder since 2019, has undergone three operations, stem cell treatments, physical therapy, and hybrid assistive limb treatment. Hey, this is Ozzy Osborne. Stay tuned for more. Os- no. Hey, this is Ozzy Osborne, and you're listening to Jerry. No, one more time. Hey, this is Ozzy Osbourne, and you're listening to Jude. How did you get him to do that? He was in town when you just asked him. Um, <clears throat> the thing with him, is he in the Hall of Fame? He's got oh, yeah, so, I, solo I'm, or with... I think, uh, I think probably, probably twice. Both, yeah, okay. both the band and with uh, Black Sabbath for sure. Isn't it's not much of a Hall of Fame. You know, uh, but I remember when that se- the um, series was on TV... That yeah. was, it started out very charming. The one 
first episode was funny. After that, not oh, watchable. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I think it went way over the years, but well, I, didn't. I thought it was pretty solid. Well, it helped launch, launch Sharon's Sharon, career. Sharon! It's tough to beat, and now Joel really go nuts. Those first three Black Sabbath albums, I'm sorry. Those are, those are very fun. They're, they're not hard to beat. They can be oh, beat. They're, they're very good albums. Yeah. That very one good. with the... Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's uh, Sweet Leaf. That's Sweet Leaf is the name of that. Oh, song. is it? Didn't know that. <laughs> Thanks, John. Uh-huh. President Biden and Speaker Kevin McCarthy are sitting down today for a high stakes meeting amid tensions over what each man characterizes as playing politics with a potential economic disaster. They'll have to come up with a deal to avoid the country defaulting on its debt. Some Republicans threatened to not be on board without the promise of spending cuts. The White House asserting it would take no hostages or negotiate terms of the matter and says it wants to see what the Republicans want to cut. I do love that the president said uh, it's non-negotiable. Oh, really? Because we're not in a crisis at all? We're not. We're fine. Oh. I I love McCarthy's tweet where McCarthy said, uh, I won't won't play games with this. Okay, well, then stop tweeting at the president. (laughs) Just shut up and talk. FBI agents on Wednesday are searching the Delaware beach home of President Biden as part of an investigation into the previous discovery of classified documents and other locations connected to the president. The planned consensual visit is the first public known search. The FBI conducting in search of that residence in Delaware. Agents did not obtain a warrant for the search, and uh, they wrapped that up. I just saw before we started news, so they wrapped it up about a half an hour ago. Uh, from next door, I think, Chris, I think you brought this up when we first talked about it. After more than a year of debate about whether a Chinese company's plan to build a corn mill in North Dakota was an economic boon or oh, a yeah. geopolitical risk, an assistant secretary of the Air Force has weighed in with a warning that the project presents a significant threat to national security. I'll say. The letter from Assistant Secretary Andrew P. Hunter, released publicly by North Dakota senators, noted the proximity of Grand Forks Air Force Base to the proposed mill and said the project raised near and long-term risks of significant impacts to our operations in the area. The debate over Fu Fang USA's plan to build a giant milling facility on the edge of Grand Forks, less than 15 miles from the Air Force Base there, divided the Republican power structure in North Dakota and showed just how swiftly the economic relationship between the U.S. and China had changed. Though the Air Force letter did not name specific threats, residents had voiced numerous concerns. Some in town said it was unwise to deepen economic ties with China. Others speculated the mill could be used for spying on the Air Force, which the company from China denied. Hmm. Say that uh, that Joe Biden story and the feds yes. showing up looking for documents. Now, say it was your house they were going to, to look for some documents. Mm-hmm. Would you be worried about other stuff that they found that maybe aren't documents I'll but say. could prove to be? I would not be. I, I would not be either. No, I don't have anything. Huh. Weird. Guitars. Matthew? Uh, no, I can't think of anything that I would be worried about. Uh-huh. Maybe All they're just not All your cosmetics? Lo- huh? All your cosmetics? All the cosmetics. I mean, we got but, stuff left What about right. that secret spot that you keep, Oh, you the know, box. Yeah, the box. The yeah, box. we'd have to really hide the the box. The playbill from uh, the Nutcracker. Yes, <laughs> yeah, the playbill from the Nutcracker would be hidden. I can see Suits just showing all. Now this is a light that goes on a wood boat. It's never been mounted, and it's still in the box. Look, I I've got the original I receipt. Have I have you want to look at this? No, really, come back here. Look at this thing. This is amazing. Have you ever heard of the actress named Valerie Curtin? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Okay, Curtin. never mind. Jane Curtin. I know. Valerie Bertinelli. Oh, why'd you bring her up? She was on Rockford Files. I had to look her up because she seemed so familiar. But she you... would, would we all know her if we saw her, one of those kind of things? I think so. That's why I looked it up. Yeah. Well, now I'm going to have to write it down and look her up yeah. when we advertise. Uh, speaking of TV, Joe, since you brought it up, what a segue. On Tuesday, Hulu announcing a series order for the revival of the animated hit King of the Hill. Hasn't been around for a few years. That was a pretty good show. I love that show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we had a ton of drops from that show in the old days. Damn it, Remember? Bobby. You, you like pie? <laughs> Tons of drops from that. Uh, they are bringing back the original co-creators, Mike Judge and Greg Daniels. 
uh, Kathy and Jimmy, Stephen Root, Pamela Adlon, Johnny Hardwick, and Lauren Tom, who all lent their voice talents to the original, are coming back as well. Technically, a reboot of the animated comedy has been in the works since 2017, but uh, it hasn't happened until now. The Emmy-winning series originally aired on Fox for 13 seasons from 1997 to 2009. And Phil McGraw, you know Phil, right? Dr. Phil? Is, uh, I know who he is. I don't watch his show. He's ending his reign as the king of daytime television. I thought Judge Judy was the king. Oh, she's, she's the queen, queen oh. probably, yeah. But in this After, day and age, who knows? That's true. After 21 years of dominating ratings, Dr. Phil will stop producing new shows after the 2023 season. But you might not be rid of Dr. Phil yet. Why? He says, uh, well, he's signing a partnership with CBS Media Ventures, and he expects to be on TV in the evening. What was his claim to fame? Uh, Oprah's Oprah. guy? Yeah. Okay. I got a story for you. I know yeah. personally, personally, mm -hmm. the person who went to the airport was getting on the plane and showed the ticket at the gate. Boarding pass, yeah. Boarding pass, and, and she was listed as a male. And what did they do? They said, you, you're, you she said, back. and she thought real quickly and said, I identify as a male. And they let her on. Wow. No, no, huh. no, no. Yeah. That's hearsay. That no, did I know, not happen. I know, no, I know. Somebody, this somebody told you that, fed you that line no. in order to get you to say but it Brooke, on the are air. are male and female on the boarding passes? Uh, they are in the reservation. It's not on the boarding pass. That's well, weird. Well, for some reason, she came up See, as a male, and she said, well, that's okay. I'm identifying as a male today, and they let her go right it's on. Made, it's made up. And it was wow. not an international flight. This was not on her passport. I don't believe so. Where okay. were they going? I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> that is some wacky stuff. <laughs> oh, I'm not buying it. Sorry. Well, maybe skeptical. I'm telling it wrong. I think it was my sister. What? Yeah, it was one of my sisters. Huh. And you told, told you that told you the story, right? Not the person with the boarding pass. What? Yeah, never, she what? told you the story. It yeah. didn't actually happen yeah. to her. Did I miss something? What does this have to do with And Dr. she Phil? read it on Facebook. Oh. That's a good point, Chris. <laughs> That's my job. Never this is mind. like the kitty litter box in the bathroom story. <laughs> Everybody's got a story, but nobody has proof. After a tip led authorities to two emperor tamarind monkeys believed to have been taken from the Dallas Zoo, questions remain about their brief disappearance and an unidentified man authorities want to speak with. The monkeys were in the news on Monday. I almost used the story yesterday because they were still looking for them. Oh. They were found, though, yesterday afternoon inside a closet in an abandoned home in Lancaster, about 15 miles from the zoo. They released a photo of a monkey in a closet standing atop what looked like fencing. The Dallas Zoo said last night we're thrilled beyond belief to share that our two emperor tamarind monkeys have been found. They'll be evaluated by our vets this evening. Their short-lived disappearance followed a recent series of suspicious incidents at the zoo that involved a leopard, langur monkeys, and a vulture, all of which led to a hike in security. As the investigation in Dallas continues into how exactly the monkeys made it from the zoo to the abandoned home, Here's what we know so far about the case. The zoo learned about the duo of missing monkeys on Monday. Dallas police concluded the monkeys' habitat was intentionally cut open. It was believed the animals were intentionally taken from the enclosure. The zoo has uh, had been closed Monday due to inclement weather, and the closure extended through Wednesday due to the ice storm that's passing through there. Speaking of which, how about those drivers of Texas on the ice? The ice. <laughs> they don't know what they're doing, do they? Uh, how the animals got out of the zoo and got the uh, into the house is still a mystery, according I don't like to monkeys. police. You don't like zoos? No. I've decided I don't like monkeys. Hmm. Yeah, they're no. not trustworthy. They'll rip your face off. Monkey, they're evil. Yeah. They're the devil's I animal. Don't like them. Yeah. Well, one of the favorite, one of the best stories ever on the Garage Logic broadcast was the uh, what animal had something stuck in its rear end? I believe that was a monkey. A little monkey. Was that a little monkey? And the guy had to go and I'll... and he. He had Licked to get it. it. He had to lick it. Right. Right. That's the way you had to get it out. Right. That well, was one a, of the funniest stories. He drew the what assignment. Was it like an ice cream cone or something? He, he, what was it? No, you had some good lines here, Kenny, in that one. You said, uh, hey, I got a pretty uh, weird idea here, but uh, how about trying to lick it? John, thank you. Okay. All Glad right. we Hit the wrapped thing. her up on you that. Remember that? Are we closing the show? 
No, we're coming back with uh, some. <laughs> You cannot stop him. He'll just make a move. Joe Suchere. The 2023 Choice Bank Minnesota Golf Show returns to the Minneapolis Convention Center Friday, Feb 24 through Sunday, Feb 26. I'm going to keep repeating this deal because it's so fascinating. You go online <laughs> now and get a $12 ticket. Okay. And along with that, you get 13 free rounds from the TwinCitiesGolf.com. Uh, That's valued at 455 bucks. That's a pretty good deal. I can't believe that. Plus, you get a coupon for 20 bucks off at PGA Tour Superstore. Buy your tickets today at MinnesotaGolfShow.com. It's presented by Choice Bank. And thanks in part to Nelson Marine, Waggle Golf, X-Golf Minnesota. And your select Buick dealers, great deals on the latest equipment, accessories, golf apparel, uh, plus special offers from your favorite courses and golf resorts, lessons from pros, your chance to win a hundred grand at the Nelson Marine Long Putt Contest. But go now to uh, the MinnesotaGolfShow.com. Get a twelve dollar ticket, and you're going to get thirteen free rounds of golf. That's a steal. Uh, it really is a hell of a bargain. We'll see you there. We're going to be there on Friday. Feb, I can't wait. Feb 24. Well, I go I go anyway. I might as well go there and get paid. Get your gear. Get your golf gear. Got to get stuff. Only because they come to us all the way from Marloth Park in Umpumalanga, South <laughs> Africa, from the traveling lineman. It was on this day. Feb 1. Uh, in 1840, Thomas B. Walker was born in Xenia, Ohio. He made his fortune in lumber, and then he developed the Walker Art Gallery, which opened in 1894 and later became the Walker Art Center. He also played an instrumental role in the creation of the Minneapolis Public Library. He died in 1928. Hmm. All right. So on this day, in 1886, St. Paul's first Winter Carnival was held, hosting competitions in curling, skating, and ice polo and boasting the first ice palace in the United States that was built in Central Park. Uh, the palace is 140 feet long, 120 feet wide, and 100 feet high. I have a carnival, or a winter carnival question. Mm-hmm. When we find the medallion you hid this year... It's been found. <laughs> oh, it has been I found. I believe it was found late yesterday. Oh, I did not know that. I didn't know that either. Be- Be- at Phelan. Because oh. they had said uh, mm. when the clues, Shocking. all the clues are given out, uh, when Joe you know gets a little lazy and, I don't and it's found the on the clues. second day, but they said hey, if no one does find it, the money will then go to the prize money would go to charity. Was that new this year? No, I think that's probably always the case. It is the case. Yeah. Okay. On this day in 1887, February 1st, the Northwestern Publishing Company was incorporated in St. Paul as a general job order printing office with the subsidiary enterprise of publishing the Western Appeal, which became The Appeal. In 1889, a weekly African-American newspaper that had first appeared in 1885. Editor John Quincy Adams later called it a national Afro-American newspaper and intended it to be a bold and active publication which would represent people marginalized by their race. Hmm. i got to think that race relations in the United States were better in 1887, and they are today. I'm, I'm going to not agree with you. Okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say that's I just threw that out there to see what you'd say. True. On this day in 1933. It's a long list on February 1st. The last one. Oh. <laughs> Wendy <laughs> Anderson was born on this day. <laughs> wow. Wendell R. Anderson was born in St. Paul. He was on the silver medal winning 1956 U.S. Olympic hockey team. He was a lawyer, former legislator in both the House and Senate. The governor from 71 to 76, you'll remember the famous Time Magazine cover sure. of Wendy yep. Anderson holding up a walleye, and mm-hmm. the caption was, The State That Works. What the hell happened? <laughs> After helping to establish a firmer control on state finances through the Minnesota Miracle Fiscal Reforms of 1971, Anderson ended his career as an elected official by appointing himself to fill Walter Mondale's U.S. Senate seat following Mondale's election as vice, vice President of the United States in November of 1976. Was that a bold move, or was that a... It's a, a move that kind of ended his political career. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Me want everything. Right. Thank you, GLers.
Yes, thank you very much, GLers. And um, don't forget, I'm here to tell you all about Pod MN on your smartphone. Check it out for you want if you want to find the greatest podcasts out there. Well, you have to do it by listening to some other podcasts. Where do you find them? In the library at podmn.com. What about YouTube? Uh, that's super easy. You just go over to YouTube, you subscribe to Garage Logic, and you are gold. You are what we say, golden. Um, also, the Garage Logic Town Council available at garagelogic.com. There's a huge laundry list of positives for you, including when you're listening to the podcast, you get to hear what goes on during the breaks. Don't you want to know what we're talking about during the breaks? Ripping each other, mocking. Let's go here. Right. <laughs> or, hardly ever complimenting each other like, wow, that was a fantastic segment. Thanks, guys. That's I'm fired age. up. <laughs> well, that's where you find it. <laughs> Sign up for the Garage Logic Town Council <laughs> at garagelogic.com. Cha? I think we can cha today. Mm, I don't know about that. No chas. Cha. Hmm. I don't even know what cha means. I don't even know what that means.